Good morning, welcome to the College of New Jersey. My name is Matt Middleton. I am the Associate Director of Admissions here at TCNJ. Uh, I'm also an alum of this school. I graduated back in 2000 from the college and loved it so much here that I never left. So this is my 25th year year here, if you count my uh, four years as a student. Uh, and I'm really thrilled that you've taken the time to learn some more about our institution, uh, as well as our admissions process. Uh, I'm not sure if TCNJ is the first school that you're visiting or the 50th school that you're seeing, but what you are undoubtedly going to notice, the more schools that you visit and the more research that you do, is that there are really two kinds of colleges out there. On the one side, you've got the state universities, and those are typically massive institutions in terms of their campuses, in terms of their class sizes. They usually have a lot to offer in terms of majors and sports and clubs. And they're not that expensive. You know, they're somewhere in that $25,000 to $35,000 range per year. And then on the other extreme, you've got the smaller private liberal arts colleges, which are going to have a very different look and feel to them, academically, residentially, socially. Uh, those schools might not offer as much in terms of majors or sports or clubs. But the downside to those places is always going to be the cost. I mean, most smaller private schools right now are $65,000 a year or $70,000 a year, and it just keeps going up and up and up. What we really like about the College of New Jersey is we think we do a really good job of taking the best parts of those two very different models of higher education and sticking them together. We are a state school, so right off the bat, you know it's fairly inexpensive to go here. If you are an in-state resident, it costs about $31,000 a year to attend the college. That's for everything. That's tuition, room and board, fees, pretty much everything but your books. If you're from out of state, it's a little more expensive. It's about $42,000 if you're from outside New Jersey. But what we are offering you for that $31,000 or $42,000 as the case may be, is a lot more like what you can expect to find at a smaller, private, $70,000 a year school. And there are a lot of examples of this that I can give, but I think the best one is the class sizes. The biggest class you are ever gonna have here at TCNJ is between 60 and 70 students. And that's gonna be pretty rare. Most of your classes are gonna be in the low 20s or high teens. And the more you get into your major, the smaller and smaller your classes are gonna get. In fact, when I was a senior here, I had one class my last semester that had five students. I had another class that had six students. Uh, I always used to joke that you can't fall asleep in those classes because it's pretty obvious if you doze off in a room with five or six other people. Uh, it's not for everybody. I'm the first to admit that. But if you are the kind of student that really likes that more personalized attention, that really likes to feel connected to your faculty and to your fellow students, then this is a really phenomenal school to be at. Because unlike the vast, vast majority of state schools in this country, you are never gonna have class in a room like this with 300 seats and someone doing a PowerPoint presentation in the front of the room, someone who is never gonna know your name, someone who's never gonna be able to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. And a lot of times, quite frankly, that someone isn't even a professor. It's a TA, someone who's getting their graduate degree at the school. And maybe you only see the professor two or three times during the semester. That never happens here. None of our classes are taught in lecture halls, and none of our classes are taught by TAs. All of our classes are taught by faculty. And 92% of our professors have the highest degree possible in their field, which means that almost everyone you have class with is gonna be doctor or so-and-so. And what those small classes allow for is for our students to do some really exciting things as undergraduates. Uh, we call them signature experiences. There are five of them on this campus, and while you're not required to do all five as a TCNJ student, our hope is that most of our students will take advantage of as many of these as possible. Now, we cheat a little bit because the first one, everybody's gonna do whether they want to or not. Everyone is gonna have a personalized experience educationally because of those small classes and because your professors are really gonna take the time to get to know you. They're gonna know if you're in class, they're gonna know if you're doing the work, they're really gonna be engaged with you whether you're in a course in your major or whether it's a course in our liberal learning program, it won't matter. Your faculty will be connected to you. Another thing we're really proud of here is our research and internship field experiences that we offer our students. And this is across all majors. What we are thinking about constantly academically here is how can we make you stand out? How can we give you an experience that you can talk about at grad school interviews or med school or law school or for a job, whatever it is that's gonna come next for you 
after you graduate, we want to give you an experience that really stands out. And for many of our students, it's this one. It's this internship opportunity with a local company, or maybe it's a company in Manhattan or Philadelphia. Uh, it's doing really in-depth research with a professor here. And I'm actually a really good example of this experience as a student, because when I was a senior here at the college, I got to do a year-long independent study project with a professor. I worked one-on-one -on -one with him the entire senior year. I wound up producing a 107-page research paper, which I don't recommend for everybody, but when I was interviewing for grad schools, one of the first questions I would often get asked in my interview was, have you done any research? And I was able to whip out this giant paper and, and show it to them and, and explain about this amazing experience that I had. I'll never forget the professor at another institution told me first thing when I showed them that paper was that I had already finished my graduate thesis paper as an undergrad and no one else that he was interviewing had had that kind of experience under their belt. And that's what we want to give all our students, not 100-page papers necessarily, but something like that, something that they're passionate about, something they're enthusiastic about. And a lot of times, it's going to be this research and mentorship experience. Uh, but maybe it's more about community-engaged learning. Maybe you want to get more involved in the service aspect of our campus. We do a lot of different service projects, both uh, locally around the institution, um, but especially in the city of Trenton, which is only about 10 minutes away, our state capital. It's a great opportunity for our students to give back to the community. Maybe you want to go much farther than 10-minute radius to the campus. You want to go abroad. TCNJ sends a higher percentage of students abroad than any other school in the state of New Jersey. Whether you want to go for a semester or for a summer or even for one of our winter programs, every student in every major is encouraged to go abroad at some point during their four years here. So we want you to take full advantage of that. And then lastly, you might want to be looking for a leadership experience. We know our students want this opportunity because so many of them, when they apply to the school, have leadership experiences at their high school. And so we want to promote that as much as possible here once you're here. It could be leadership in the classroom, but it's also leadership in your extracurricular activities as well. So all five of those signature experiences we think are critical for you as a student, but they're also things that TCNJ feels we're really good at, that we invest a lot of resources in and we want you to take full advantage of. And the best thing about this is that you can do all five of these things and still graduate on time. TCNJ has the fifth highest four-year graduation rate in the country for any public institution. We have a 74% four-year graduation rate, which means that our students are doing a lot of amazing things, but also heading on to the next thing in an appropriate time frame and not paying an extra semester or an extra year of tuition. Uh, so those are some of the academic opportunities that we offer here. There's also some residential and social parts to this public school, private school, hybrid model that I'm describing. And I think the main one is that our campus, even though, again, it's a public institution, is a good middle-of-the-road size. We have about 7,000 undergraduates here, but our campus only takes about 15 minutes to walk from one end of the campus to the other, uh, so it doesn't feel like one of those larger state schools. It's also primarily residential, so most of the students who go here uh, are living on the campus, and that means they're getting involved in the campus. They're joining one of our 220 clubs and organizations. They're getting involved or attending sporting events with our Division III sports program, which is regularly rated as one of the top programs in the nation. Um, they're doing things locally, again, going to Manhattan or Philly or Princeton or the shore or skiing. All of these amazing opportunities are within an hour radius of the school, and our students take full advantage of them. So that's a little bit about TCNJ in a nutshell, but what I want to spend the remaining few minutes of the time talking about here is our application and admissions process. There are two ways to apply to TCNJ. The vast majority of our students are using the common application, but you can also use the coalition application if you prefer. And you can see we have multiple deadlines and multiple ways to apply. For transfer students, the deadlines for spring are October 15th. For fall, it's February 15th uh, for fall admission. For first year students, there are three ways that you can apply. Most students apply general admission, uh, which has a February 1st deadline. But you'll see we also have two rounds of early decision here at TCNJ. And early decision, if you're not familiar with the term, is basically for a student who walks around our campus and says to themselves, wow, this is absolutely positively where I want to spend my next four years. Who do I make my checkout to? 
which is me, by the way. I usually have my name tag on for this. And we're always happy to receive those checks personally, but certainly if this is your top choice, you can apply in one of those rounds of early decision. We will notify you within a month of the deadline as to whether you've been accepted. The catch being, as it is for any school that offers early decision, if we admit you in that program, you have to come here. It's a binding agreement that you're making with the school, and you're going to agree to withdraw any other application that you have out to other colleges. So you only want to check off that early decision box if you are 100% positive. This is where you want to spend your next four years. We do not offer early action here at TCNJ, so the only ways to apply are through early decision or general admission. There are a couple of programs that have slightly different deadlines, so it's always a good idea to check our website before you apply. The best example of this is we do offer a seven-year accelerated medical program here at TCNJ, and that program has a significantly earlier deadline of November 1st because there is an interview component attached to that program. But the vast majority of our majors, it's a February 1st deadline for general admission. Now, in terms of the criteria that we look at when a student applies, there are six things that we will evaluate. And this is true for first year students and transfer students alike. And I'm gonna share these in the order of importance. The most important one by far is going to be your transcript. The grades you've gotten, the courses that you've taken, the strength of your curriculum, the strength of your school relative to other schools, we will use a student's class rank a little bit more than we use their GPA when making evaluations, and there's a really simple reason for that. GPAs, especially in New Jersey high schools, just tend to be all over the place in terms of what they mean, and I'll give you a real quick example. The very first application that I ever looked at as an admissions counselor, the student's GPA was 6.1 which I thought was amazing. And I was all excited to admit my first student into the school, and then I looked at their transcript and saw that they had C's and D's pretty much all over the place. And it turns out that this high school was on a zero to 10 GPA scale. So 6.1 was actually kind of lousy at that school. So we don't get hung up on that number. People ask me all the time, you know, what's your average GPA of admitted students? And I honestly have no idea. We are not recalculating your GPAs. We're looking at your GPA in the context of your school. And that's why if your school uses class rank, that information is useful to us. Now for transfer students, we can use average GPA because all colleges are on the same 4.0 scale. For a transfer student, the minimum GPA to apply is a 2.5. Most of our admitted students historically have a 3.3 GPA or higher. Starting fall 2020, TCNJ is really excited to share that we are now a test optional school for both admissions and scholarship purposes. So students no longer have to send in their SATs or ACTs to be considered for either admission or for scholarships. Uh, we are happy to still receive those scores if a student is really proud of them and wants to send them in but we will not hold it against a student if they choose not to send us scores or if they're not particularly happy with the scores that they do send us. That's why the other parts of the application that I'm talking about today are given a little bit more weight than in past years. Uh, we're really focusing much more on the student's four-year high school experience uh, than how they do on a random Saturday for standardized testing. The third thing that we look at are your extracurricular activities and involvement. That is a really important part of our process, especially if you have any kind of leadership or service in your school or your community. You want to have that stuff right at the top of your activity list because those are things we are paying really close attention to. The fourth thing that we look at is recommendation letters. And I'm often asked, you know, what's the right number of recommendations to send in? And I tell students that two or three are plenty. We always want one from a teacher. It is great to get one from someone in the guidance counselor office, uh, but I really like that third one, the basically someone who is outside the classroom. That could be a coach, that could be an advisor to a club that you're in, uh, that could be an employer, uh, not a parent or a grandparent. Uh, you'd be shocked how many grandparent letters we get every year, and while they're usually really positive, they tend not to be the best source of information about you, uh, at least the most objective source of information about you. Just try and find someone who's not related to you by blood, but who can still be enthusiastic about your candidacy. The fifth thing that we're going to look at is the essay. 
And one of the nice things about being a common app and a coalition app school is that there are a lot of essay questions to choose from. So you've got a lot of variety. You can pretty much send us an essay on almost any topic imaginable. The only advice I ever give with the essay is to get someone to glance it over real quick before you hit the submit button. A uh, few months ago, I was reading what was actually a really good essay from a student. And the very last sentence was, this is why I feel I will be successful at the University of Delaware, which is great, but wrong school. So try and get someone another set of eyes. It could be a teacher, it could be a parent, it could be a friend, but just have someone else quickly glance that essay over just to make sure it's got everything it needs to have in there and that it's really promoting who you are and why a college would be lucky to have you. And then the last thing we look at, and I leave it for last on purpose, is the academic major that you are interested in studying at TCNJ. You can apply completely undeclared to TCNJ. If you have no idea what you want to study, if you want to explore multiple options here, that's great. We do have that undeclared option. But if you are leaning towards a particular program of study, we do encourage you to have that on the application from the get-go. And the reason for that is because there are some majors here that are really popular right now, and they are a little bit more competitive for admission as a result. And on the flip side, there are some majors that we are really trying to grow here as an institution. And so we're a little bit more flexible when it comes to students in those programs. Now, if you happen to apply into a major that is more popular in the year that you apply, you don't need to stress about it. Because if we feel that you're a good candidate for the school, but we can't squeeze you into the major that you picked on the application, we will reach out to you and we'll ask you if there are any other majors here that you might be interested in studying. Because we know for a lot of students, they have lots of interests and lots of passions and they would happily major in 10 things if they could once they got to college. And for students like that, we wanna give them every opportunity to explore all the available majors that we have and potentially uh, ease their path to acceptance here at TCNJ. And then the last thing that I'll leave you with, or actually two things to leave you with, um, the last one is to really make sure as an applicant that you are checking your email frequently, that you are doing anything that colleges are asking you to do as part of your application process that might be of a supplemental nature. And an example for TCNJ is we don't have interviews, but we give students an opportunity to tell us more about specifically why they're interested in TCNJ. Um, through a very brief online form uh, that will be in a student's application portal after they've applied. It's not required, but clearly a student who's really excited about us should be filling that out and telling us why, because we will use that information to help us make an admissions decision. But make sure you're taking advantage of those opportunities if we're presenting them to you, and make sure you're checking your email frequently because we will, as many colleges will, be sending you a lot of information that way. And now the last thing I wanna leave you with is, and this is honestly, if you only remember one thing that I've said about the school, this is the most important thing that I can share. And that is that TCNJ has a 94% first year retention rate. This is the highest in the country for any regional school. Basically, any school that gets the majority of its students from its surrounding contiguous states. Anywhere in the country, public school, private school, it doesn't matter. It's the highest retention rate in the US which means that something really good is happening here. Our students are happy, for lack of a better term. They're successful, but they're being challenged at the same time. And trust me, as an alum, I could be up here all day talking about what an amazing experience I had at TCNJ. And I know it's easy for our student ambassadors and some of the other students that you might meet on campus to do the same thing. But that's a number that doesn't lie. It basically means that if you come to the campus on a random day and go into our student center and start tapping first year students on the shoulder and asking them, do you like it here? 94 out of every 100 students you talk to would say, yes, I like it so much that I'm coming back for my sophomore year. And just to give you a method of comparison, the average for state schools in this country is about 67% for first year retention, which means if you go to an average state school, you've got a one in three chance of not being there as a sophomore. So I hope that as you learn more about our campus and you talk to our students and faculty and staff, you're gonna learn more about why that retention rate is so high and why our students are having such a phenomenal experience here at the College of New Jersey. Thank you so much.